Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Halo Runs podcast. I'm Kronos, and I'm here with our co-host for the day, Dubzo. Oi, oi. <laughs> so, yeah. Today we're going to talk about uh, GDQ, con congratulating Gelk on his Halo 3 submission. Uh, we'll be talking about some IL histories, so some random levels that we choose and want to discuss their runs and history and stuff. And then we're going to also talk about Halo 3 with the PGCR timing rules. And yeah, yeah. probably some more topics as well on the way. Yeah, stuff, stuff will come up, I'm no, no doubt. Tier list, we're not doing a tier list. <laughs> yeah. That's all F tier runners in the, in the chat, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you guys don't want to see it, I promise. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would be pretty controversial overall. <laughs> I mean, if someone makes it on the website and then sends it to us, maybe we can do it at the end. Yeah, I mean, there's so many runners as well. I believe the there was wait, one... runner list is on screen. What the hell did you actually do this last week or something? No, no, we we did a level tier list, not runners. Oh. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, fair. Yes, yeah, so obviously GDQ, <laughs> we got announced that Gelk has been accepted as a bonus run of Halo Free Legendary. Yep. That was really cool to see. Yeah, as yeah, you can see. GDQ yet again. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could just talk about some GDQ Halo runs. I, I don't know when the last time Halo 3 Legendary was featured. I guess something that would be cool if I were to bring it up for myself. Game. Uh, Halo runs at GDQ. It should be able to get a list right here. This is perfect. Yeah, whip that, whip that shit up. Okay, so I believe oh, this okay. is all of the Halo runs that have been featured at GDQ. Oh, or GDQ any 2018. GDQ let's, let's through that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously Halo 2 was, was a dominate in the early years. Mm-hmm. I forgot that Mono did the any percent run. Oh no, that's just because it's uh, okay. I I see. I see. It's listed in terms of the Halo games. Yeah, I think you could sort it by list like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cody Miller <laughs> Cody run again. <laughs> those need to have a line for them. We don't talk about those on time. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> I like. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Halo Combat Evolved 2001. Time. Four hours 17. Seventeen. And then Reach was also three hours twelve minutes. Clean. Yeah. Like I, I didn't even get like part time. He didn't get the <laughs> foot on the pedregas. I mean, it's close enough. Not not too <laughs> shabby, you know. With just a little bit more practice, he could probably get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> blank it's category. Just... It's a blank category. Because yeah, he no, didn't he even did, run well, legendary. It's because he, he changed the difficulty for fuck's sake. They didn't know. He didn't have a category. Oh, man. Yeah, and, yeah, that, and then obviously okay. Mono and Goat are runs yeah. back in the day. It says Platform X, what's original? Were they both <laughs> running on X, what's original? Yeah, it right? seems like it. Or is that just the category of the game? Surely. Uh... Surely they weren't. Surely they were running on Xbox 360. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, neither do I. Did Goat, did Goat, up ever, did Goat up run? On, con on console ever? I don't actually know that. I believe so. Was it? I, yeah, I thought because, he was the PC, Andy. Because... Tom says he was on PC. Oh, really? That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure... Has Goat Rope done controller speedruns? I wonder. That's probably a good question to ask him. Because yeah. I believe he was running way back then, like, li literally at the launch of the game, so... Or at yeah, least I mean, playing at the time, so we'll we'll see. Yeah, maybe it's maybe maybe a good question. Yeah, on, yeah. Well, well, maybe we'll ask him in a future <laughs> week. Uh, yeah. Spoilers. Um, obviously the court run, Monopoly and Rudy. Yeah, that's and then pretty solid. There, the Halo Free Ledge run comes in. Blaze run it. I didn't actually. I've to be honest. I've never seen that run. Yeah. One fifty four GDQ twenty fifteen. So I think that was also the last run. time Halo Three Legendary was ran seems so yeah. pretty cool to see Galk run then 
Yeah, it's, definitely. It's a big change because last run was an hour 54. Yeah. It's going to have dropped, obviously, a huge amount. It's yeah. a really, really cool opportunity for Gelk to to run. Obviously, mm -hmm. we had um, Sorix run Halo 3 Legendary ESA. Yeah. But even that was quite a while ago now. Mm -hmm. 2017, was that? 2018? Probably 2018. Maybe. Yeah, 2018, I think. But yeah, quite quite a while ago. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to be honest. Um, the Gelk is in the chat. I see. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 Cronus, are you gonna be on the couch? You're, you're gonna be. In yeah, I, I believe there's quite a few Halo runners that are going to be at the event. I believe Nervy and Helpless plan on being there along with oh, that nice. chat. So nice. that would be that pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um. In terms of the GDQ, what 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 city is it in this year? Uh, it's in Minnesota, so Minneapolis. Uh, I believe yeah. that's just like central <laughs> of yeah. the U.S. Good good location, I guess. Then. Uh, nice. the GDQ is also uh, both it, like it's a hybrid event, but I believe a lot of the runners will be in person, but yeah. some will be like out. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't actually looked at the runner list, but I presume that's mainly for like European runners and stuff. Yeah. Zoom in a bit. Yeah. Here we go. Actually allows allows for that. Yeah. Then we have Halo Four by Joker in twenty sixteen. Actually, I don't think I think that's the only time Halo Four was at the event. That's pretty interesting. Good. <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Chill <laughs> out. Halo Four guys, yeah. chill. Chill, chill, chill. <laughs> Oh, and then we have some juicy Kryphon runs by Kryphon yeah. and Garish. Those are pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, the the Garish run is what, what got me into Halo runs, to be honest. Um, I was watching GDQ that year. Well, I wasn't, but I was following the stream on Twitch, and I saw Garish was on, and I was like, who's this knobhead <laughs> running, running my, a game that I like? Let me check this out. And uh, obviously the run was really good. Yeah, I, I believe, like, when you think about it, it's some of the runners that got into the game, like, a lot of them come from GDQ, and, for instance, like, a lot of people came from Mono and Goat Ropes yeah. runs back in the day, and then I believe Absolutely. a lot came for Kryphon and Garish's as well. Yeah, definitely. They, so, they did, those were two, huge. like, very influential runs. Yeah, I remember Garish's chat in the year that followed his GDQ run really, really blew up, and, um, obviously, he's Continued that into the current days, developed the the garish normies as Gelt is <laughs> calling them in chat, which is, yeah, yeah true. Like, I um, mean, but... it, it did make it a lot pop, like very popular though. Like, yeah, Garish has been basically carrying Halo CDE for like five or six years before modern day standards of stuff. So it's pretty yeah, important. <laughs> yeah, and then Distro's run Halo Five. It's pretty yeah. solid. Distro, amazing <laughs> runner. We're going to skip this one. Uh, re -re Redacted's yeah. run yeah. in uh, 2018. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Halo Reach. Uh, Wolfie Pay Joke Legendary Co-op. That's a really insane run, by the way. Like, at yeah. the time. Like, especially yeah, because the that. two of them were basically the world record holders doing co-op, and they've done co-op so much at the time, I believe. That was like yeah. a super cool run. Yeah. I believe it also got a lot of people into just Reach as well. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think it did because Reach had a little little spike around then, I'd say, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, that was, was really cool to see. It, it is it is interesting how many of these like spikes and interesting games do revolve around GDQ. It's it does have a huge influence. Yeah. Maybe I'll be uh, <laughs> running some Halo Free in 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 June. Catch, yeah. catch some normies. <laughs> Yeah, I and, believe uh, like this was actually the perfect time because I believe right after this was the PC release of MCC. Yeah. So that brought in basically a ton more people, and now yeah. re like Reach Co-op is probably like super insane now just because of people like Wolfie and Phaedra setting the like yeah, the totally way. <laughs> exactly, and um, yeah, I mean. Reach was obviously the first game that came out on MCC PC as well, so yeah, it was really really good timing with that. Mm -hmm. And we had 
Kronos underscore R. <laughs> I don't know who that loser is. Yeah. Doing a bit of C P C legendary. Yep. Do you look back fondly on that run, Kronos? This run was terrible. <laughs> this was a very bad run. One twenty six thirty. I believe like uh my only decent Halo run was probably my AGDQ twenty twenty two one. Yeah, I feel like I remember that that twenty that um the CRDQ run. Yeah. Was that like when shit did shit go bad on Halo? Did something bad happen? I, I believe that was like on my ADDQ oh, run, but uh, okay. that run had like everything else went smoothly. Just the start was super bad. Yeah. Uh, this run, I think it was two betrayals in library or something that just destroyed the run. Yeah. Grenade getting launch back. Yeah, I think that was the run. It, it was either that one or one on ESA where literally I threw a frag grenade. And then it chain reacted with like five or six grenades and it flew like all the way like down the like you know the flood tunnels in yeah. library yeah it just flew from <laughs> one end all the way to the other end and killed me that was so stupid has anyone got the clip i'm sure they, they might but i i see a reach from there i don't i don't know who that is or where that was or what 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 uh that was alice uh she ran for fleet uh, Fatalis, which is a uh, woman's uh, GDQ event, I believe. Ah, okay. So promoting a uh, woman in speedrunning. And Alias is a pretty solid reach speedrunner. Did uh, a lot of easy runs. Yeah. I believe was in the top uh, 15, top 20 around. So pretty cool to see some Pro Halo representation. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that an event that goes on every year then? The Fatalis, do you know? Yeah, I believe uh, if I have it here, I could probably pull it up. Or This was Frost Fatalis, for instance. Uh, ah, okay. So that was one of the events recently. So That's pretty cool. similar. We need more We need more women in, in Halo runs, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. It's the only one on the list. We need more. Yeah, nice. Obviously, oh yeah, Rob's run, I almost forgot about that as well. Dude, there's been so many runs. Yeah. Rob's run New was game. pretty sick, not gonna lie. Yeah, um, yeah. O o classic ODST run, to be honest. Yeah. I feel like ODST is a good one for uh, marathons, because it's yeah, pretty it's nice. Comfy. <laughs> I mean, exactly. it was. it's also it's like map. very important, because I believe that was the last Halo game that didn't get in at the time. Yes, true. Yeah, 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 all the other games. Rob been has like... been like submitting it for like ages. I think since yeah. he started submitting to gdq events for like a few years and then it finally got in yeah so I big shout that. outs <laughs> then a massive loser followed him <laughs> doing hella free easy 114 i mean yikes time to be honest yikes time it's pretty bad of a time but <laughs> i i do i do think that uh sasquatch's run right there was like very important it definitely brought a lot of people into halo 3 especially to his streams in particular yeah so, yeah true like he just blew up pretty the run, the run the run went the run was shit but it was entertaining very entertaining it did well yeah. yeah exactly 114 i can't even remember what happened how did he get a 114 <laughs> yeah gelk saying uh he went through for all the clips which i mean Failed it's more. typical sasquatch yeah, yeah, I think I do remember mm -hmm. that. And then... Sasquatch in races, Sasquatch in marathons, Sasquatch in anything. <laughs> Dog. All right. Uh, Mono's yes. any percent run. Very unique run. Yeah, the meme category yeah. almost, but like wild category. Yeah, especially with AUP. I think that's like the biggest thing was AUP. Yeah. And really that was. To show that off. Yeah. It wasn't as much of a speed run as it was a glitch exhibition. Mm. I would say, but still, it's so important and really cool for just showcasing tricks. And I honestly think that's what GDQ goes for, is showing not, like, speedy stuff, but stuff that looks super cool. cool. Stuff that, they, they, they like to farm bat chests, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Then Distro got another chance at Halo 5 Legendary, cut almost 10 minutes off his previous run. Yeah, that's actually sick. Yeah, really cool to see some progression there. 
And Cronus R again. Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, another CE legendary. I got the meme time <laughs> yeah. of 117, so. <laughs> yeah, again, almost cut 10 minutes off your time. Yeah, I mean. After the, the first, first run. Yeah, after not beating <laughs> Garish as <run. laughs> Oh boy, yeah, that was embarrassing. Boxed but... Garish. Yeah. I mean, it was Garish a pretty bitted. it was a pretty bad run, but still, uh, yeah, I I do think it would be really cool to see a really good CE runner nowadays be at GDQ because they could yeah. get like a sub one ten really easily. Yeah, but you know, marathon runs and actual runs tend to be very different. But yeah, absolutely. You know. But we, I mean, with Nervy attending. Uh, the upcoming GDQ, maybe he'll submit to the next one. That would be really cool to see. I yeah, he does. That maybe submit easy. <laughs> I, I don't know if easy would be too interesting for he's that. He's pretty good at legendary as well. I mean, he's got yeah, an easy yeah. rec, right? But he's not. He's not just an easy Andy. He, he's top three on ledger, right? As he yeah. Four. He's top four, three. Wait. Help. Which one? I'm, I'm, I'm which? Laboon up, Laboon up. He's third. He's third place. Yes, third. he's Bob Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last month. Yeah, I'm trying to think about the runners. I believe Helpless was fifth place, didn't Bob Garish yet. Yeah, so. that's, that's correct. <laughs> that's fine. And then last we have Halo Infinite by Waifu. Yikes. Wait, uh, not, not, not for Waifu, Yikes for Infinite. But it was cool <laughs> that it got a run. It's cool that it, it, it yeah. did the thing. I mean, Halo Infinite needed a run at GDQ. So yeah, now put it put it back mm -hmm. in the bin where it belongs. <laughs> Never again. It's such a shame that Halo Infinite just as a speedrun sucks. Not gonna lie. Yeah, at it least is. for all the down patching things are like impossible, and just the it's run just, quality yeah. is not that. The good. actual game is the base game is not bad. It's just yeah, all all the all the shit. Yeah, showcasing play. everything and then every thing gets patched. Like, yeah. that makes it so that no one really wants to run Halo Infinite because the next thing you know, they're going to find something, they're going to patch it. And that <laughs> kind know, of PhD is, like, down terrible. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, it's really true because, like, what, what, you, what you want is a game that's accessible, right, at GDQ. And obviously in the past, we had, like, Halo 2 runs and CE runs, which... Uh, I mean, Halo 2 especially, when it was only on Xbox 360, or Xbox original, was, mm -hmm. was was not that accessible. But if you had that console, you just put in a disc and you play the game and it's good to go. Yeah. Dice um, made a new guide. Yeah, I saw that you were make, trying to make a guide for down patching. Hopefully it's a lot easier. But still, like the entire process of down patching is just unappealing, especially to people that want to get into the game. Which is why Halo Infinite doesn't have like many runners either, is because well the game yeah. isn't performing well just viewership wise or popularity, so yeah. that's a big part. And then just the really amount of effort it takes to get into the game is really rough. Yeah, it's it's not an easy run either, like by any means. So it's a shame, but it happens. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, really cool list actually. I, I didn't yeah. I didn't know this list existed, so it's really really nice to see. And obviously Gelk's run will be hopping onto the bottom of this list. Yeah. SGDQ twenty twenty three. Yeah. So that's pretty yeah, cool. That's really legendary. It's actually been pretty cool. Like I believe there's been around one or two runs every year for GDQ. Yeah. So that's pretty sick. Yeah, it's really um it's really nice. To, to obviously to be seeing that they 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 like their Halo games so obviously Gelkit is on a, on as a bonus run so he's not guaranteed to run me and Chronos <laughs> discussing <laughs> briefly before a stream. I pray for you, Gelk, if you fly out there and they're like ah we didn't meet the, we didn't meet the down the donation <laughs> requirement you're not running that would be BS and we'll yeah. we'll all write in chat that we're in, but I'm sure I'm sure it'll meet the goal so yeah I believe Honestly, there was right. one run that didn't make it. But I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know. The chances of a bonus run not making it are very low. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's hope it doesn't happen. Yeah. Also, 125, that's, that's a pretty solid estimate. Pretty good. Yeah. So that'd be a really solid time to, to get. And obviously, I'm sure, sure you can. It's not unobtainable. Like, so, it's, yeah, it's a good estimate. Yeah, you also have to think it's RTA versus like whatever 
theater or PGCR stuff sometimes. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty solid. Definitely. Okay. Well, obviously, obvi <laughs> I, I I don't want to give you the opportunity to plug yourself too much. You're running at GDQ as well. We are on a Halo yeah. Runs podcast, obviously. But yeah. do you wanna do you wanna talk about your run real quick, Kronos? Yeah, I'm also running uh, Elder Scrolls Anthology, so all five Elder Scrolls games at the event. So yeah, I'll probably be pretty busy with that <laughs> as well. Yeah, dude. Before stream, Kronos is like, "I'm so retired from Halo." I'm like, "What? Why are you? Why are you listening to this podcast, dude?" <laughs> like, I'm so retired. I haven't played in like two months. Game's trash. No, he didn't say that, but <laughs> it's pretty funny. That 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 legend is mental, by the way. They, they declined three thousand five hundred hours of speed runs. Yeah, I believe the chances of your run getting in is less than like five percent or something. Yeah. Uh. But a lot of like scrubs must be submitting or something. You can actually look at the can you list. Like, can you? Yeah, there's 36 Halo, pages. Then. Did anyone else submit? Do we know any uh, other Halo runners? I could literally just type Halo. Oh, Nervy submitted. <laughs> Didn't get legendary. Oh, did he? Rip. It's oh, unfortunate. Dang, that's, that is a rip. Yeah, maybe they just thought that. I don't know. I believe Halo it's because uh, another legendary run was done recently, which was me at... Uh, it's your like, fault, Kronos. Yeah, it honestly is my fault. I'm sorry, nerd. Wow. <laughs> because yeah. I, I ran, and then they generally like to wait like a few years before running the same game again. Yeah. That or like different categories and stuff. That's kind of why like you often see some runners don't get in multiple times for the same game because yeah. it's like that. Like, honestly, looking at the list of GDQ runs, by the way, if you want yeah. to get the next GDQ run at the event, you should submit Halo Reach Legendary Solo. I believe <laughs> there's not been a single run one. of Reach Legendary True. Solo. True. So that's pretty cool reach reach is a popular campaign with mm -hmm. uh normies i guess so i'm sure it'd uh, be quick to get submitted when not accepted that or halo 2 legendary as well because i believe there hasn't been a halo 2 anniversary run no that's so that's point. pretty important we especially with halo... different strats and stuff so yeah any top tier halo 2 or halo reach runners you could probably submit, <laughs> and you'll have a decent shot at making it. Not gonna lie, yeah, dude. Imagine Jeff submits <laughs> our hero. <laughs> like you just boot the heretic. Like, I mean, he'll yeah. probably get in if he submits. Yeah, like, he would. That's it's sure. pretty sure. likely. So pretty unless easy. another like top tier Halo Two runner submits, and like for instance Halo Two Anniversary, I think that's way cooler of a run than classic at least whoa for... <laughs> at least in my opinion load screens bro <laughs> come on yeah um <laughs> <can't be> a <laughs> bold joke did you ever get ripped in dude honestly i'd, I'd fly out i'd get on jeff's couch but yeah yeah definitely submit those runs maybe to another <laughs> gdq event that would be pretty cool to see uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, yeah, obviously too easy to be really good, but obviously you'd have to, uh, now they're doing online stuff, I guess, now it's a hybrid event, I, I don't see why too easy wouldn't be able to get on the reach ledge, that'd be really cool to see. Yeah, uh, I believe... But then obviously exclusive would get on. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of weird, I think too easy did ESA if someone was saying it, I, I yeah. don't know if it yeah, was it ESA, yeah, okay. I think, I think it was ESA. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, basically, yeah, if you want to submit to those events, or these events, you have a great shot at making it for those two categories, so, yeah, I'd love to see more Halo. <laughs> I don't know when uh, the ESA uh, summer run submissions open up. Good point. I mean, they have, obviously the event's in July, um, so I don't think they've announced anything yet, but... Anyone in chat going to submit to ESA? I don't think I'll be able to attend this year. But obviously, 
you usually get some good representation at, at ESA as well. So yeah, I was uh, thinking continue, about yeah. maybe one year going to ESA in person, but now like oh. that's a lot. Come on now, Chris, <laughs> you're making money now. Stop making it's about it. It's, it's just that I've been super busy, and I would like to get settled a bit more into my job. Like I've been working for like two weeks now, so still like yeah. pretty fresh. I'd rather yeah. wait for a bit more stability and next stuff. year, dude. Next year, yeah. I we'll I, I really want to see like a full on Halo segment at ESA where we do like Halo one, two, three. Like we yeah. can just get like a an eight hour like a Halo block Halo. would be really yeah. cool. <laughs> that'd be that'd be awesome. ESA I think relay. definitely yeah, like it's a full on relay. Like we don't muck about. No pauses between runs. We just pass the mouse and keyboard over and like get on play. Yeah, I don't know. Good, good, <laughs> but I don't know whether they. I don't know if they'd want us. <laughs> it would be cool. We'll see. Definitely got the runners for it in uh, in Europe, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Guess we could talk about some ILs now. Yeah. Did, did you pick one? So I, I suggest <laughs> this to Chronos as an idea for, for some easy content. Uh, we just pick an IL that we were familiar with and we go through the. The graph, the, the good old graphs that you get on Halo runs, like showing the record progression and just talking about the different time points along that, when the strats were developed, how good the runs were at certain points. Garish vid, EUC runner. Dude, we've got Garish, man. we got Garish. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, but yeah, so, I mean, do you, do you have an IL that you want to talk about, Kronos, for this? Uh... I didn't pick any initially, but no. I mean, probably... we can, we can, I mean, I, I was going to talk about, of all levels, I was going to talk about Arbiter. Arbiter? With, yeah. On MCC? On, on MCC, yeah. If you want to, if you want to whip that, that good old graph up. Yeah. So to me, the MCC graphs are actually really cool because they include what we refer to as a pre-patch Halo 2 anniversary. Um, I'm sure everyone in chat is familiar, but if you're not, Halo 2 Anniversary had a massive patch. Um, you probably have to see the date on the graph. Uh, yeah, August 2018. That was when sword flying and sword cancelings were patched into H2A. Um, as shipped, it was based upon a Vista port, and it hence had sword flying patched out. They also saw cancelling as causing issues. So melees and sword lunges are a bit dodgy in Halo 2. They often miss without the player meaning to. And as a result of patching that, they patched cancels. So sword cancels and melee cancels didn't exist in H2A for its initial four years from launch. Um, as a result, obviously, you couldn't sword cancel, melee cancel, but butterflies weren't a thing. And all of it got patched in one day. Free for free were just like, you know what, fuck it, dude. And I think it was due to, oh my god, what's his name? Uh, the guy who used to be in Halo Runs a lot is now works for Free for Free. Um, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Joker Nibre. Nibre, yes. Nibre. So Nibre was a <laughs> was a good old Halo Two fan, and he he started working with Free for Free. I don't think he was employed at that time, but he helped them get sword flying patched back in and melee cancels and sword cancels unpatched and yeah obviously the game changed massively so i mean looking at the graphs is there like a few time points so obviously the very early days of mcc the record's a bit bit naff yeah um it's probably worth going down to the nasa 330 run on easy if you want to, if you want to bring that up, I may as well get the video on. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about it. So, Naza was a runner that hasn't been active for a very long time, but he was very good at H2A pre-patch. He had a lot of records, including this one. And H2A, honestly, it was a bit of a walking simulator back then. It was pretty chill, to be honest. But nevertheless, you could see significant differences in in the runs that were submitted. And this 330 was actually very solid. Yeah. Now, there's, there's no audio volume for this video, actually. Okay, it that's like fine. <laughs> it's fine. I, 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 I can commentate. So obviously there's no cancels or flies, so we're just running at the start. Um, 
H2A's movement back in the day was literally slide jumps and sword lunges, interestingly enough. So you can actually see in this run, as we get to the hallways later on, he's doing very simple sword lunges to save time by literally lunging. It's every lunge saved like half a second in movement. And that, that, was, that was as <laughs> optimal as it got. He's going to have to run to the button here and clear on the way. And you'll see that the, the clear is very different as a result. He full clears all of the sentinels. And then he's killing enemies on the way to the button. I don't actually remember much of this run, to be honest. But it was it, it, it held record for quite a while, all the way up until the Swordfly patch. This was set in... 2015. This was this was set on Christmas Day, <laughs> 2015. Um, I see nails in chat. We might talk about nails in a bit. I don't know if we ever got a pre-patch Ricky for Arbiter. Towards the end of the pre-patch days, that was when nails showed up. I mean, he, he's got a full clear there at 147. That's actually now, really sick. <laughs> with, 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 with the sword fly at the start, which saves eight seconds, and with cancelling to the button, a sub 150 uh, full clear is good. And he got a 147 in absence of that. He was benefiting a little bit. So you can see here he's doing repetitive sword lunges. He can't carry momentum, but he can just do small lunges to enemies to save a second at a time. And it adds up, well, maybe not even a second. Um, another cool thing about pre-patch, maybe not cool, but the carbine had double the rate of fire, so it was helping him quite a bit in that hangar clear. Wait, really? The carbine, the carbine yeah. was double fire rate? <laughs> That's sick. Yep. Yep. And it, it's, it's like that on Vista. You know, the Vista carbine is still still in that way. I don't know what caused it. I'm presuming it's just going from 30 tick to 60 tick. They didn't <laughs> account for fire rate, <laughs> and it was hence doubled. Obviously, he's running through this level. Now... I'm pretty sure I did a full game run today, and I obviously had sword cancels, sword flies. I did glass clip, and I got a free 23 or something, which was fine. And this dude's getting a free 30 without any of that. Uh, Just from you holding also have forward to well. the door as well, really well. Yeah. Like, if you don't get the door, that's like another 10 seconds of walking at that point. Exactly, you're absolutely buggered if you get slow door on pre-patch. It was like a death sentence in full game. Instantly losing 15 seconds. So yeah, really, really interesting run. Um, Naza had some re really good times. And obviously then we get to around 2018 August. Uh, that was when the patch day was. AFC, I think, set the first record. And like nails, nails was coming in. <laughs> But well, you're looking at the worst times now here. Oh, are you on the history? Oh, wait, how do you get to that page? Oh, full record history, I see it. Yeah. I see it. <laughs> so then you get to September 2018. It might be worth just flicking up quickly. Uh, Darren had a, had a record. Darren H2. We got 312 in September of 2018. Yep. <laughs> so it's quite interesting. It was, this is a month after sword flying was added before we got to the 312 mark, which is pretty common for full game now to be honest mm -hmm. um and yeah uh darren was a runner is is the video private or can you open it oh looks like it's working i think darren darren was an interesting player so this guy could have been a fucking god to be honest he's really really good at video games he's really really good at halo he was a multiplayer guy he uh, made montages in halo similar to zoo uh he could have been he could have been the next zoo to be honest it had he tried um, but he only played hello 2 for maybe a month after sword flying was patched in for a little bit of fun he played a bit on classic as well back in the day I and mean, i used to enjoy watching runs but he'd never he never properly got into it unfortunately but it was really cool to see him bop nails with this 312 that sort of came out of nowhere um i don't know if it's the best run do you want to maybe skip to the hallways since that's where we see the big differences from the nazar run I don't know, I can't remember how good his hallways were, but I imagine they were pretty decent. Yeah, clean. And it was obviously such a huge difference there. I mean, that was probably six to seven seconds alone lunge. in that first hallway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who, like, discovered that lunge method, because on Class 8, you can't carry momentum like that. So, even though these sword tricks were patched back in for H2A, they actually behave very differently to 
to classic and we had to discover new ways of, of doing them. Cancels are better, flies are obviously slightly different timing and lunges can carry momentum if the enemy stood still. It's it's all really interesting shit. And yeah, that was that was uh, that was sort of the start of the sword cancel sword fly uh, period. Not too long after, Nails uh, got a 305. This was four months after, and this record stood for over two years, two and a half years. This 305 stood. This this run was fucking good. This run was really really good, and I know a lot of people were trying to bop this. I know there was quite a few sub 310s coming in within that two and a half year period. But Nails just popped the hell off. I mean, I think it was mainly his um, his hanger clear which, which carried, but then he just he just landed everything, to be honest. And it was a uh, just a really really clean run to, to to see, to be honest. Standing for two and a half years is pretty insane. But obviously, within those two and a half years, we got PC launch and stuff starts to change. Um, what time was his hangar clear here in this room? 1.31 all dead? 1.34, uh, okay. Yeah. Still still really good. <laughs> really insane. good. insane. Just, like, seeing a lot of old runners, for instance, like, a lot of people don't realize how good some of the older runners were, and they get forgotten about <laughs> in modern times. Yeah, like, absolutely. For instance, like, Nizer, like, some like a lot of people won't know but Nasser is just literally one of the greatest Halo 2 players during that era yeah and he, he was doing it on legendary and easy he was he dominated most styles um yeah like I, I saw uh Sorix reference Nasser's regret in chat yeah Nasser's <laughs> legendary pre-patch I'm pretty sure is still like top 5 IL today yeah it, it's, it's absurd like that's probably <laughs> one of the most absurd ILs I've seen is Nazi. doesn't have sword flyers doesn't have cancels was that old and it's still like in the top 5 or something it is it's pretty mental um, so yeah that, that was the nails run obviously <laughs> then we started to get some new people coming in. Temp, I think this was Temp's first IL rec game. I, I know I saw him in chat earlier. And maybe it's just worth popping this one up and skipping straight to the Banshee because this was a run that was rec -y and I'm pretty sure it was due to Slinky Flips being discovered. So obviously a new strat. Obviously Temp was very good at Arbiter as well. It wasn't It wasn't a bad run on its own, but... Don't know it, why that video wasn't moving. Oh, now it is. There you go. It's popped up now. I think this was the first uh, recce to, to yeah, introduce Slinky flips. flips. Yeah, which I don't know how much time they, they saved, to be totally honest with you, in this setting, but it's it's a it's a decent chunk. Yeah, I, I think, think it's like, it's like two seconds. or three. Or oh, really? It? More, I think it's more. More? Yeah, it might yeah, be a little bit more. Okay. And yeah, uh, yeah T Temp getting his first ever recce. I'm pretty sure if you check the video description for that, I was watching it the other day. Oh, oh, no. In one good. of them, he said "Recky for twelve hours" or something. I'm pretty sure he got. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, because there it is. these were both on the same day. Yeah, and then literally the day <laughs> after, Rocats dropped to two fifty-seven. Unfortunately, Rocats' times are both um, are both uh, unlisted or privated, I believe. So unfortunately, yeah. you can't watch those videos. But I'm pretty sure the two fifty then implemented class clip. Was class clip discovered at that point? I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but the 250 was yeah. really damn good. Which uh, obviously the 257 stood for two and a half months, and then he got a 250, which I assume was due to a, a glass clip introduction. And then obviously, mm -hmm. huge time save out of nowhere. Harks involved, so you know there's going to be some new big <laughs> fucking trick involved when Harks coming in to steal a recce. And it is Arbiter Hanger Skip, which was meme for a long time. There was actually a bounty on this. Uh, but whoever discovered this was going to get paid a decent chunk of money. I can't remember how much. I think it was $100, is it? Uh, anyway, Mono <laughs> claimed it with one method. We eventually discovered this method, which is fairly consistent. Well, we're needing a box. We get pushed into the floor for whatever fucking reason. And then we're on the edge of a 
<laughs> oh wait, that, that, that was one without the cancels in it. This yeah. was like the full RNG, like AIDS grind one. Yeah. Classic hard crick here. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this was huge for the category. You can see it saved 25 seconds of the previous one. It wasn't op even optimized. That that time save is huge. We saw the nails run earlier where he cleared the hangar in 134, I think. Hark was obviously at second hallway is there yeah. at 134. <laughs> It's... And then it started to get optimized. Obviously, Hark was cutting time off himself. The 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 method for skipping the hangar was getting more uh, optimized as well in terms of the method I described. So maybe we open this nails one, the final wreck here. Two minutes and ten fucking seconds. Yeah, we've gone from three thirty, which was an insane time. We're now at sixty six percent of that. So nails. Using a box again, but this time he doesn't fall straight through the floor. He's going to fall into position halfway into the floor. He's standing on some weird, funky polygons so that when he does a sword fly, he gets sucked downwards. That pulls him through the the void space and into the hallways. Yeah, and then he just so goes weird. mental. Like. Oh, he got. He, he gets the extra spawns. I know. He's just nail shit, man. <laughs> like, yeah. like, look at this movement too. I like, know that. It's so clean. It, it's really annoying to watch sometimes because it's like, <laughs> how are you this good? <laughs> I know. Like all all these cancels are so so difficult. I. It's funny. People start Halo Two and they think sword flies are hard. The real skill is in sword cancels. That which is actually, I think, yeah, there, there's the glass clip method off the left elite, so you can fly to it. Absolute optimal. Getting through the glass, doing the slinky flips. I mean, this time is just ridiculous, to be honest. But yeah, sword cancels. I think sword flies have a lower, higher skill floor. They're harder to learn, but to master sword cancels is so much. More because it's all about your angles, your, your timing, your positioning, all the inputs being correct. And uh, yes, yeah, Nails is, is, is the master of those, and he showed that that 210. So yeah, I just yeah. thought that'd be a nice little segment to talk through the history of an IL. Um, my choice was was obviously Arbiter. Have you yeah. got a choice that you want to talk through, Kronos? Yeah, I guess I could talk about. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty biased, but CE Silent Cartographer. So, yes. The, like, I'm biased because I got the. Because you're on there, you little <laughs> yeah. shit. But uh, honestly, this run is just absurd in terms of the strats, because yeah. it from the very beginning, it was already pretty cool to see. Like, yeah, I mean, could probably 407 see, oh. as the first record on Halo runs is yeah. pretty, pretty quick, man. Yeah, I don't have it on hand, but Goat Rope. Like way back then, for going nowhere fast, I believe he had around this like kind of time, like pretty close to, like maybe five minutes or something on SC, and that's literally in two thousand three. So the level was already super short, yeah. but then you go on and see, wow, even now, like the run is still improving with like completely different strats. I wonder what strats go on here. This is who, who was this? Yeah, this is Lefoc. <laughs> so, for people that don't know, Lefoc is actually a world record easy runner way back then, uh, in 2014-2015 era, and was really solid at just all the levels. So I believe he's the running beach on The hasn't changed much. Yeah. But, Wait, he needed the hog, dude. Wait, do oh, yeah. people don't even do that now, do they? Yeah, we don't because it's uh, slower. And I believe because we need all the grenades for stick stack. stack. Yeah. But uh, here, interesting to see though. This is I'll the like... old route. Uh, this is an old route. <laughs> yeah. I believe everything's pretty much standard for the start here. Yeah. But then... Oh right, I thought you were going to say he's going to do different warthog thing. Obviously the classic fling, I don't know who discovered that. Yeah. I think it was way back in the day even. For yeah. This. 
It's always some random dude mucking about. Yeah. But yeah, back then we grabbed the overshield and... I still do, dude. I this still route. do. <laughs> this route is actually pretty comfy. If you haven't done yeah. this uh, route, I, I recommend it. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I really enjoy the route. Like, I, this, is, this is the way I run SC in 2023, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Screw stick stuck. Yeah, Nade jumping jump. up to the camo. Yeah, this was actually really sick. <laughs> like, it's pretty optimized. Like, even for this kind of run back then. Oh, that nade jump's clean. Yeah, it's so clean. Like, the movement was solid. The grenade jumps were clean. Yeah, this was really solid for no grenade stack. What, what, wait, obviously, it says the easy on screen, but this is legendary, yeah, right? This is legendary. Yeah, so he, he, this was a really interesting route because your camos times out just about this ramp unless you got really good movement which he has so in legendary full game people used to have camo up until this point and you'd have to time it to basically perfection otherwise your camo would expire and you'd have to fight through the enemies it was just perfect <laughs> to get us out of there it was uh it's one of those lucky coincidences really yeah and that's basically the level it's insane how optimized like this kind of run was I believe the run stayed like that for a little while. Uh, I believe yeah, it I mean, was Vetro. Vetro did the first, uh, I believe, glass or window fling. Which, if people haven't seen, this is probably the way you should be doing SCILs now. But <laughs> <laughs> it is absurdly difficult. This is. The window oh, fling. the reverse fling. Yeah. Down onto the yeah. OS. That yeah. is insane. <laughs> so you can't live that without grabbing the OS, but it's so difficult. <laughs> oh, you, you can? You have, yeah, you have to hit the like slanted part of the box that is right next to yeah. it, and then basically slide and crouch to live. It's pretty interesting. The rest of this route will be the same. I'll see if he does the nade jump here. Yeah, I believe. He does. Yeah. Okay. So it's not an easy nade jump, that's pretty pretty tricky. Yeah. Overall, like these older runs were really clean at the time. And Vetro was like the god at the window fling. Like he just grinded that level so much. And then this is when Garish comes in. And basically destroys everyone's times with the same window fling. And then Savu comes in with the greatest find of all time. Unfortunately, it's <laughs> not here. Is it here? I'm pretty sure he has. He has a vid. I am I swear he has a vid somewhere. Is it this one? No, it's not. Uh, no. Guys, right. If you're in chat right <laughs> now, export all of your times from Twitch VODs into youtube please it's one click of a button okay. and it 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 preserves it better i right. to watch garish instead of savu unfortunately yeah. i hope it doesn't bug out on twitch here because sometimes it just goes like errors out but yeah you can see garish did the standard fling this is what you see in most full game runs now but yeah here this is the old version of stick stack so i don't know how many people know how to do this i did this back then but yeah this was the old version pog old version and it goes all the way up there the you can see stack, it yeah. was very interesting how that was done did, did I wonder? Did Savu's run get all the way to the health pack, or was it like a small stack? I believe it went all the way up. Okay. Yeah, I believe Savu's spent so long. Savu's been like the number one grinder of finding those made lineups, because he was also the one that developed the modern uh, stick stacks for. Like hog stack and shafted stack, all of those were developed by Savu, which is really Savu. Sick to Savu see. is the man. Savu is a really cool dude. Yeah, Garish. I'm gonna. We love Garish. Yeah, Savu did end up getting one of his his runs here, 
but uh, nice. I believe this one is the first one with triple maid. So Savu spent a lot more time lining up this part, so he lost a little bit of time here. He also did a slightly different grenade stack method. And yeah, here he grabs the nades. Don't know why it's lagging out, but yeah, he's <laughs> lining up for triple nade. That was a very slow lineup. But, I don't be mean. Yeah, the, <laughs> this is the first one through the triple nade here. So clean. Yeah, it's insane. Just carrying the overshield over. Yeah, uh, the <laughs> overshielding campaign is so cool, man. It allows for so many different tricks. Yeah, and just Bungie just put it in at the sort of random locations. It seems like, but it works. Yeah, and that run was absolutely absurd for like finding the new strats and then garish optimized Re it. recce for a full year as you, if you can as you can see there yeah that savvy run i believe then garish decided to grind it out and get an actual good run like this yeah, was I probably used to love this aisle back yeah. in the day this was the best uh run pre big stack now so uh i believe you can see it from here this was just absurdly fast his grenade lineups yeah, he like, wasn't looking about look yeah. at that my man yeah he's garish pogging in the video is he pogging not yet he's going for triple nade <laughs> yeah you can see how fast he set it up too yeah, I mean, compared to that Savvy one we just watched. Yeah. PB, Garish was on it. Dude, back when Garish was a grinder, man. An IL Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? Garish used to do ILs. Yeah. Sag. Even a nade boost there, the little nerd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, Garish is honestly extremely good. It's just that, yeah. <laughs> He was he was yeah. un unbelievable for a period of time, but no one was yeah. even near him. Just the biggest grinder during this time, the best runner by a landslide, in yeah. his iconic. How is that a three oh seven? How is that a three oh seven line? <laughs> <laughs> it's just clean, sir. It was just clean. Yeah, and then here's Cordy. Cordy, you run. Oh. Cordy was the first person to actually land a shafted stack here. So. Pog. Yeah. Cordy. Uh, See him in chat. The the, the boy, Cordy Axis. The Belgian brute. <laughs> oh, you don't remember even getting SC world record? I think this might be a <laughs> fake world record then, but still. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> because I, I think. Yep. Actually, it might be world record. Well, I, I don't remember. How, why would it be fake? Who's who's hiding records? I, I don't remember <laughs> properly. But yeah, this was the old shafted stack lineup. So, doing grenades from very far away. And then jumping Little all run. the way to the part Little right there. <laughs> Yep, the top is shafted. And that saves uh, barely five seconds, I want to say, to a perfect... Or maybe it saves like a little bit more, but still, like seven, eight seconds or so. So that was a pretty major part. And then I believe I did one as well. That was just slightly cleaner. But just sh shitting on Cordy. Boy Chanos. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Joe and Cordy did AOT score. Yeah. Oh, nice. Bit, yeah. bit, cl bit tighter there, close to the yeah. tunnel. I like the landing, I like it. And that was a three flat. And then Garish was the one to do the first uh, hog stack run. And this was Recky for eight months, I think I saw there. Yeah. So Garish spent a little bit of time lining it up there. A little. 
but this was absolutely absurd for being the first hog stack run. Does he pog once he gets through the window? I think chat pogs. <laughs> no, not Bailey, dude. <laughs> Garish never pogs, man. Not now. Is he skirty in the chat? Oh, there's a pog champ. Old pog now. champ, man. You know what, I'm gonna pick up some plasma grenades. <laughs> oh, Kodiak is in chat. Kronos in chat. Yeah. That was honestly really sick. Uh, something pretty small as well is this fling right here at the start you also have to do differently because you don't fling it you have to like slide through the door in order to park your hog against the window yeah so makes that was trick, yeah. pretty sick and then yeah i got a few more records and then cambit came in grinding it out just the <laughs> on gearbox as well he Went back I'm to Gearbox mad. to do I'm this mad. since Gearbox was the better way, I think. Cambit came a long way, man, from being a little bull, bull Barry. Yeah. To being, uh, <laughs> like, with the best CE runner. Yeah. It was like Cambit only was the TV guy, and now Cambit's yeah, literally just the best Halo runner currently. Yeah. So. The Australian invasion, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have Burnt and Cambit. Burnt's the one that develops every single insane trick from nowadays, and then uh, Cambit's the one that just optimizes everything to yeah. absurd levels. Burnt, Burnt's little streak, I don't know what year it was in when he was dropping IL records and new strats, it was really cool. Yeah. Really fun time to see. Is that actually faster? Just dropping straight down and taking the stun. Instead of sliding? That I don't know. seems weird. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about the same. It's probably just easier, right? Yeah. I do wonder how long Cambit spent grinding SC. Because I do know my SC was pretty solid. How long did your rec Recky last, to be honest? It's always good. I good think it look. lasted like a few years. Uh... Yeah, three years at least. <coughs> yeah, that's yeah. A, well, two and a two, yeah, two, two and, and a half. half. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, you know, record's good when it lasts over two years. Mainly a boost from the elite. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with the man. Hey, Cambit's also doing my strat at the end, where you kill all the elites instead of driving. Weird strat, to be honest. Weird. I mean, strat. it's free. <laughs> I don't understand why people don't. Do it, I'm pretty it's sure safe. I, do. I honestly think it's safer because <laughs> <I'm not fully laughs> because other times when you do the driving, you do bad at driving, then you're just dead. Yeah, yeah. there you I, just literally stand quiet. and headshot the guys <laughs> because they stand at the same spot. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know. Everyone uses it, but yeah, everyone thinks it's weird, like like Cody Exus says. Cambid lost a full game to ending. Really? <laughs> well, from yelling the hog, was he yelling the hog? Yeah, really cool, really cool level. Yeah. Is sound good over late? Yeah. In a casual playthrough, that level takes an hour or so. <laughs> yeah, there's so much that we skip just with the hog fling, and that makes this level. It's like probably one of the most iconic speedrunning levels is Silent Cartographer. Yeah, that's why it's in the speedrunner playlist. Yeah. That chest. <laughs> what other levels are on that playlist? It's like Crow's Nest for some weird reason. And <laughs> Floodgate? Was Floodgate one of them, I think? Floodgate's on it. I think it's Uprising. Is it Uprising for Halo 2? Uh, hmm. I think it's Uprising. Something like that. Or Delta Halo? I don't know. No, it might be Delta Halo. Yeah. Yeah, um, what, what, chat, talk to us. What do you think about this as a, as a little segment we could do? It, maybe maybe every week, but just just picking an IL and talking through its history, seeing how the strats developed over time. Obviously, we could get uh, people in who are more expertise in the in the later runs, or later Halo games, should I say. But yeah, for me, it's really cool. Especially on a, a MCC where... Yeah. Secret crazy stuff. Good short segment. Yeah. 
I definitely want to do some weekly things. I believe Dubzo and I discussed about it earlier, like some fun quiz mini games or something. We'll yeah. probably do something like that in future weeks. So hopefully you guys enjoy stuff like this. Because I, I do think it would be really cool to see just some similar things from week to week. Yeah, also. you know what's coming up and you can you you have sections which you enjoy, sections which you hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then just obviously uh relevant topics for the week. Have we got I saw some people putting questions in the chat. Do they go to you, Kronos? Yes. I Earlier on, do you want to see if actually... we got any questions before we talk about PGCR? My favorite topic. Okay. I believe they were these two. I'll just send them to you. Sure. Yep. I mean, the first question is I don't know how we can answer that, but the question was why did Bungie leave Halo and can we expect them to come back in future for any new Halo releases? They left because they were bored and no. <laughs> yeah. I believe there was a big thing online I was reading or something, like news in gaming Reddit or something, about Xbox changing who their mascot IP is from Master Chief to something else. Really? Yeah, I think that was something that was being discussed, and it was getting a lot of comments. I don't yeah, know if that? I have it on hand, but I believe it was like pretty popular in Reddit yeah i mean yeah but uh, bungie won't come back i think when, when bungie disbanded a lot of the people that worked for bungie did join 343 it's not like all of them went to work on destiny but it just didn't work out with 343 for whatever reason um yeah yeah but bungie would bungie will ever come back if they do it'll just be the name it won't be the the people and the the, the work yeah i i do think like 343 does have a lot of downsides, but they also have a lot of upsides too for how they've done things. It's just that just their handling of Halo Infinite did really just ruin a lot of just the hope for Halo community in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit unfortunate. MCC launch was really bad as well, and then Halo 5's whole story being shoddy and all the advertising campaign didn't really relate to what the eventual game was and Halo 4 not being great and <laughs> they, they, they've, they've done a lot wrong to be honest yeah. and they don't do a whole lot to fix things that they do wrong I think that's yeah. the main issue unfortunately but it would be really it's... nice to see some people like if the Halo IP gets sold off or something from 343 and have more people that are very interested in the franchise working on it i think that would be like something that could happen but i don't see it in the near future and i i don't know about the direction that halo is going in right now it's pretty grim but hopefully in the future halo will make a comeback of some sort but it's rough yeah yeah it is we'll okay. see, see see what happens uh, the other question was just about Halo runs uh, getting the the stream posted on the current streamers list at all times, which I I think might have already happened. I don't know. What category are we under? Uh, I think. Oh, you might have closed your. Oh, I think Dubzo accidentally left. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Accidentally closed. <laughs> yep, you're good. One head play right there. We back. Hopefully yep. you guys hear me okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. Do you want, do you want to talk about PGCR? Yeah, I guess so. So right now, a pretty hot topic is, uh, Halo Three, on its timing method, for pgcr versus theater time so yeah. yeah i was thinking about gathering a list of like pros and cons and just sure. general input from sure. chat and everyone else so i believe one of the main things that is for theater timing is regarding 
aspects of the game where sections that should be timed aren't timed in PGCR. One of the main ones is on Covenant with the Citadel launch where yep. you have that a cortana cutscene thing yeah and every time on pgcr it it's just frozen so you could basically not lose time doing citadel launch and attempting it over and over on pgcr while on theater you'll definitely gain time and i believe it's pretty significant like eight seconds per attempt yeah. so just cutting like theater into pgcr that just changes that level completely yeah, I mean, for me, the I mean, I, I the the main thing for PGCR right is it's it's ease of access right. Yeah. Um, for me, both time methods are shit. Uh, <laughs> the only good time method is RT minus loads. I agree. It is literally <laughs> a fact. You guys can argue me all you want, but it is it is the superior method, and I I will explain why in a second. So, the main reason why, guys, you are rounding. Every time for theater and PGCR is rounded, okay? It's rounded to the nearest second. And it's not even to the nearest second. It's to the it's the, the second below. So, for example, uh, you get a run that is 51.99 seconds. That's a 51 second time with PGCR and with theater, okay? Now, if I get a fifty-one, if I get fifty-one point zero one, I'm also a fifty-one, right? Mm -hmm. There's a second difference there, but they're the same time according to these methods. Now, this isn't too big of a deal with ILs. That's why we use PGCR for ILs. It's only a one-second difference, right? But you're running a full game run. There's ten to fifteen ILs within this run. That's ten to fifteen seconds of difference, which two times, which could be said the exact same but there's 15 seconds difference between them. Like, I mean, I, I don't, do I need to say anymore? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, yeah. Like it's, it's, just, it's just wrong, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty annoying, for instance, for PGCR and theater. I think it's pretty... There was one instance in Halo Reach where Mankey and Binails had, like, world records on legendary i want to say and it was literally only because of pgcr upticks or downticks in their timing where one of them got the world record over the other so it was like a fake world record <laughs> yeah in a sense just because of pgcr like lowering one person's time over the other which yeah. is pretty absurd like you shouldn't have that inconsistency in speed games in my opinion. Yeah. And obviously, it just, RT minus loads obviously removes that because it just times the entire gameplay from start to end, from a set start point to set start end point. It times it to the nearest point zero one second instead of the nearest one second. Then it adds those up and you get your final time. Yeah. The big um, downside, though, for RTA minus loads is... Uh, you're going to just rely 100% on the auto splitter for that. And if the auto splitter has an issue, your run like is way harder to calculate the time for. You'll have Absolutely. to do frame, like, frame by frame, like looking at it, mm -hmm. through, like a video editor or something. And yep. from moderation standpoint, that's a lot more work. Especially yeah, because definitely. if you want things to be super accurate for world records, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, it does. And um, it, it is awkward, but anyone with video editing software is pretty good nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that auto split is really good if the time is put into it, which it has been for Halo 2. That's where the Halo 2 one works so well. And um, once you get used to, to doing it, it's, it's not that bad. How often do you actually get a PB and you have to retime your run? It's like once a month. And it takes maybe... 10 minutes to retime that run. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and obviously, y we have an auto split which which runs anyway, so you're not you're not uh, you're not any downside whilst you're running. So yeah, it's not it's not too bad. 
but I I do agree that it's 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 annoying. <laughs> PG star is way more convenient, way easier. Yeah. So, just putting some things on the screen here, for instance, uh, like theater has a lot of issues with theater files in particular when people need to look back at their files for those they can be missing for some reason and broken or corrupted and that's a big issue and yeah but the thing is it's hard as well to switch off of theater as the timing method because you'll have to retime basically every halo run for halo 3 full game and that's pretty significant at least for like the top runs and yeah, yeah that's a lot of work and it will also kind of ruin leaderboards in the way because it's a shift yeah so yeah. any older records for instance they would probably need to also be redone and just for the sake of like keeping site times accurate it just adds a lot of nuance to it yeah uh, Temp put in a big point, which I was going to get to as well, is that RTA minus loads is the only method out of these three which times pauses. Yeah. There's zero reason for pauses not to be timed. You shouldn't be rewarded for making mistakes that have to cause reverts. Yeah. Um, I also dislike the fact that people can pause and go for just... a piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can... Dice had a joke about what if I need to piss. Obviously, you can uh, in Halo 2 at least, in CE. Uh, the PGCR time is time. This is a, the warning because this between CE and Halo 2, which sucks. Mm -hmm. CE times the PGCR screen. So you have to insta skip that. Whereas in Halo 2, we don't time the PGCR screen. So you can actually afford to have a break if it's absolutely needed. Yeah. So I, I think it comes down a lot to the player as well. Yeah. Or the runner. Because some people want an integrity of sorts to some things and some people are like yeah but i'd rather have this or this kind of thing yeah. so it depends on who you are as a runner a lot of these things yeah absolutely. And, yeah it's very hard to get a standardized set of rules for every game because of things like that <laughs> yeah like i mean um I, yeah, I mean, I've, I'm I'm pretty open to be honest. I I don't mind which one of these methods goes through for Halo Three. Um, what was what was I gonna say? There's um, <laughs> completely lost my train of thought to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Go go on, Kronos. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I was going to also say like, for instance, some people think pauses. Yeah should not be timed because like oh what if there's an emergency or like oh something broke like my controller ran out of batteries or something <laughs> it's like it like it's like pretty important to have like to save your run to just grab a pair of batteries or do something very important and have your paused timer and that can make a significant difference in whether or not you can get a record and that's something that some people have to think about is should those things be paused or not and yeah yeah because like yeah i mean nervy made a good point as well i mean we were seeing it for a short while i think it kind of stopped but there was a period where sasquatch was mm -hmm. the culprit where he was literally pausing changing input methods like every fucking five seconds in his run because there was no punishment for pausing in halo 3 and the currently obviously still isn't. Um, we we sort of I think it got a bit a bit told off. I don't really know what the what the deal was, but it it was pretty ridiculous to watch. To be honest, the fact that you can pause, switch input methods like do a, a hammer hammer boost and then switch back, and just switching for every single like DC trick and yeah, I, I think that's another thing too is pause buffering is actually yeah. significant in a lot of games yeah. or stuff like pausing to switch inputs from keyboard mouse to controller i think that's also something that you could think about for instance like yeah. nails doing slinky flips on keyboard but playing the rest of the game on controller yeah that that's like very significant because for rta minus loads of course you can't do that but for like theater pgcr stuff you can so yeah. sometimes it's good like i do think it's a good idea to have 
the ability to slinky flip on keyboard mouse and be able to play your preferred yeah. control method. But it also brings up a thing like, well, what if you want to pause to like line up something perfectly and like you won't get punished for like pre-aiming stuff or things like that yeah. or just constantly pausing for like for instance like set set like you said with sasquatch and yeah. i think that's something that we need to think about when doing these timing rules is things like that will happen if we don't enforce it and you can't just yeah. say like oh no pause like spamming what do you define as pause spamming because a lot yeah, of no, like we, it's it's impossible to just I say think i ruled yeah. this in no excessive pausing right but we don't mm -hmm. really define what that means and sometimes pause buffering is really cool to be honest i know that uh Sorix used to do it for halo 3 dc clips he would he would pause and pause, pause and pause, and and allow him to do small movements. But that should be a part of the timing, in my opinion. If if it's if it's a part of the strat, it should be timed, right? I don't. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's any anything against that in terms of arguments, but um, it it can be cool, and it's just a shame that, that it's not included in in these other timing methods. Because apart from that, yeah, they're, they're pretty uh, they're pretty good. I think for consistency, Halo Three is obviously the outlier. Mm -hmm. Halo 2 and CE have sort of the same, same time methods and they sort of retain those due to being games that didn't have in-game timing methods at all. They had to be RTA, right? Mm -hmm. Back in the day and we sort of just carried that for consistency um, between versions of, of those of those games. Um, but obviously all the games that have come right. out since, like Halo 3 onwards, are all have in-game timing methods. Yep, all PGCR. Exactly, and then all of those games are time PGCR apart from Halo Three, mm -hmm. so it is a bit of a, an odd one as to why we have have it still as theater. Um, obviously, we, we, we've we've seen the the slight the slight differences in terms of cutscene timings and that, but they're they're very similar. They're very similar. Yeah, I also think it like comes down to the community at the time, like. For instance, the armory discussion, which I don't really want to get into, but yeah. <laughs> you can see that there's like a mindset shift from older and newer runners to the game about mm. like what is important to the run and what makes things like fun to play. Like for instance, the big reason for people not liking theater time for Halo 3 is Sierra's start because you have to save and quit and then go back into the game which yeah. takes an extra like 15 20 like seconds that. and people don't like that and if you switch it to pgcr it makes it so that oh you don't have to do that you can just restart mission and yeah. that's a big upside like it's really important yeah it's really nice for just a quality of life change isn't it really yeah sierra requires save and quit I mean, I don't know if the the results of the poll are public. I know that Gelk put a poll in the in the Halo Free Discord. If you guys want to put your opinion forward to the Halo Free game moderators, there is a um, yeah. yeah. Go in the Halo Free channel in the Halo Runs Discord, and you can you can put your vote in for that. I think a lot of people did say that they prefer PGCR just because of Sierra. And that was like the biggest gripe that a lot of people had. That along with theater files being really annoying to deal with sometimes. But yeah. it's important to note that PGCR does have a lot of its own issues with Citadel launch, for instance, or other sections of the run that just don't get timed at all. And yeah. all those factors just add up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, my honest opinion, I think switching to PGCR makes sense. I think Fiat is slightly better timing method than PGCR, but just given that ODST and Halo 4 and, OD and Reach are all PGCR, it may make sense to fit Halo 3 in, in the same time method, just for consistency. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Zephyr and Dice were talking about a point I made earlier about CE choosing to time the post-game carnage report for some reason mm -hmm. it's not timed in halo 2 that's the one inconsistent between those two maybe that could be changed in the future but yeah 
It just, it just, I, I, because I personally run with timer on in CE, so I can see medals, but I lose time to having the PGCR on every, on every yeah. level. I think it's. I mean, like I, one it's my choice, so I, I, yeah. I, I, I lose it, like, but yeah. We're not talking about that anyway. We're talking mm -hmm. about Hill of Free. Yeah, I think. To I... me, RTA minus loads is the best time method, right? Yeah, I. But agree. I wouldn't want to change other games to that time method because of how easy they are right now and how people are happy with it right now yeah um but i also wouldn't want to change ever from rta minus loads game c and hill two to the other methods because they're just actively worse yeah it would make it easier but it, you're going yeah you're choosing to make the time effort worse i just i would not want to see that yeah like my opinion is rta minus loads is the best like for every game in speed running just because yeah. it's the most accurate for just gameplay in general like you're just timing all the gameplay sequences while loads are like the main only thing that separates the two so yeah. that's like my opinion i do think il's for instance for pgcr is like the best and i think that's how il's should be timed for the most part is pgcr but yeah. just for full game, RTA minus loads has to be the way to go, in my opinion, for like every game. But of course, now that PGCR has been done for all the other Halos, I think like it's a bit too far gone for being able to switch yeah, to, to, to that switch. Method. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think switching would be too too hard. I think the big problem, I guess, is if there's any Halo free runs on the leaderboards that don't have timer shown. How do we how do we change them to PGCR? Yeah, I think that's something that the Halo Free mods need to look into. Um, yeah, and keep in mind that this is not like we're switching to PGCR right now. This is just a discussion, I believe, that was brought up by Gulf. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's always like stuff to debate about this, and I do welcome any things on in chat if anyone has any opinions they would like to share about timing methods and stuff. You can say it away. We won't judge for the most part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I agree with your point as well about ILs being PGCR, just because in Halo runs we round to the nearest second for ILs, so it doesn't doesn't really matter. Um. But yeah, just just for full game, that obviously becomes more of an issue because yeah. you have 15 ILs, so rounding to the nearest second 15 times is mm -hmm. real serious differences between runs. Yeah, and what Yev said is, like, Halo runs doesn't time in milliseconds. I really dislike that fact. I think it's kind yeah. of <laughs> old school to not have milliseconds anymore. Mm. Like, I'm, I know some games and communities are like, yeah, we don't really care kind of thing but halo runs I, I don't know like it depends truncating is that the word yeah. thanks yeah that is that mm -hmm. mean rounding down no matter what yeah yeah shorten yeah good, good point temp good point yeah um we could probably add milliseconds to the site but the thing is it's, it's so few what, levels what... where it would matter right that's yeah. the only thing what I what I suggested as a thing was, if there's a tied record, then they get timed to nearest milliseconds, and that millisecond timing is hidden, but the order at which those runners show on the leaderboard is correct. If that makes sense. Yeah, I would so agree with something yeah, like that as well. So there's like a two fifty, there's two two fifty fives for whatever IL. They're both shown in 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 on the leaderboard, but they're shown in the order of which is the actual fastest run to the nearest millisecond. But on the leaderboard, they both just say 255. Yeah. But it's just for accuracy. The, the, the fastest run is at the top. Yeah. I think that I... would be maybe something we could do as a quality of life thing that wouldn't actually affect any runners. Yeah, it was like a big thing for keys, for instance, back then. Yeah. Uh, the I, day, I remember there were three, ties. like, 219 legendaries or something. So yeah. I think it was Burnt Me and one other. I, I forgot. But I had the fastest two nineteen, and I think mine <laughs> you was at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. So, you, like, you, if you were just showing at the top, then yeah. everyone who's actually in the community knows that you have the fastest run. Yeah. But you are still a tied record or whatever by yeah. stuff official like that. means. It just could be could be nice. Maybe that's something we could do. 
Did, did was there ever a video for that? I saw there was at one point there was a video for like the keys. showing the keys I a keys yeah, I'll comparison. I believe there's some old ones. Nowadays there's the brand new key strat with the mini teleport. So Yeah. I remember like the, the keys is weird now. There's like a three second gap between first and second. Like, what's going on? Yeah, so I, I don't know if you've seen uh the keys run, have you? Um, I, uh, no, I remember, I saw the strap being posted in, in Argentina, did Argentina find it? Yeah. Yeah. I so, was calling him the GOAT, to be honest, he yeah. is. Argentina's been just devving so <laughs> many, like, micro strats that it's pretty insane. Like, AOTC are easy as well with the tank. It's the same actually. Yeah, <laughs> tank meta. But yeah, this is the new keys bump, so... You bump out of bounds here, and then you do a mini teleport. This is Cambit's run, by the way. And that teleport goes all the way to the other <laughs> side, so it skips the walking. And that saves a few seconds, like three seconds max or something. That or teleport hand is. Wait, is that right? You're on the 3 4 3 rake, you know? Yeah. But it's yeah, that, that's a really insane trick that was developed. Yeah, some, some wild. Wild shit. Has there been anything any any of the big games recently? I guess the new um, Dawn skip. Did you cover that last week? Oh, we did talk about it with Hark a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You had Hark on, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the the Dawn that's skip so with huge. the cutscene thing. That's probably the biggest find of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's really cool to see. Really cool to see. Okay. But yeah, I guess, I guess my, my, my summary on, <laughs> on that point is I'd probably say go to PGCR if the mods can be bothered to retime all the runs. Yeah. Just so it's more consistent with the other games. I mean, uh, it's going to be down to primarily the Halo 3 moderators, which will be yeah. like Gelk and Sorix for game mods. Yeah. Maybe some other and people Sorix is a big fan of the theater. Them. He's a theater purist. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy theater just for the fact that... Uh, the biggest issue is Citadel launch, I think, or like things where the timing is inconsistent to PGCR for theater, where you can lose time in theater to something, but not lose it on PGCR, and it yeah. can be kind of significant. Hey, you already know I'll be abusing that. I'll be waiting out that entire <laughs> cutscene. Get Cortana's bitch face off my screen, man. I can't go <laughs> over that when I'm trying to line up my uh, Citadel launch. Yeah. That and, that like, uh, there's going to be, like, a big time cut in their record, I think, because just switching to in-game, where you have, like, you lose, or you save, like, 15-20 seconds on Sierra, and then you save, like, more time on every other level and stuff. So, yeah. the record will probably go down, like, a minute, or even a minute and a half or something, just because yeah, of true. the switch. True. Roblox, what's your opinion, buddy? Because that would bring Halo 3 Legendary down to a sub-110. Oh, no, wait, we can't do it. It'll give Sass a sub-1. It'll give Sass a sub-1. I changed my mind. <laughs> Fuck PGCR. We're staying with theater. That kid is not getting sub-1. Yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of things with it that can be kind of controversial as well yeah dang slovro bopped sorix i did not see that dude sorix is in the bin dude slovro is a really good runner he's sort of very mm -hmm. low key as well yeah there's a lot of low key runners that people don't think about or talk about too much like wood carpet for instance for ce for yeah. the longest time he had top three legendary for a long time yeah. And then people. These like, offline Andes, man, that don't say anything. They're, like they're Fire Banch? Do you swear. remember Fire Banch? I do remember Fire Banch, yes. Yeah. And the, the figure he was. The god, he was like the Halo 2 legendary guy. Yeah, that... secretly, <laughs> like, French god. He, he came in my chat once. He spoke to me on stream once. Yeah. Um, And then we we removed Armory from the timing and he deleted all of his times. So... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was sacrificed to remove Armory, boys. Did what Carpet did, he got he, yeah, he, he got the library record, which is pretty insane, right? Yeah, I believe he had uh which one? 
yeah, this first sub-10 library on easy and legendary. Like, that's sick. Like, honestly. He's the library god. I wonder how much he plays library, because it is just, <laughs> it's just an RNG grind to some degree. Like, he but even does the uh, teleport now, I'm pretty sure. Does he? Or, no, he doesn't even do the teleport. I'm I'm actually a big wood carpet fan. I, I I've been since uh since the day he uh, joined Hill Runs. He could read so many books. Yeah. Does he do it without the teleport? He plays Gearbox, my man. He won't he won't do it if he's on Gearbox, right? He did tell you on ledge. Oh, I didn't see it then. Oh, he did. Oh yeah, this is MCC. Okay. Oh, okay. But yeah. Like, this new, or, it's not that new, it's just people didn't want to do this stupid teleport strat. So you do the up warp with the brand new up warp method, this. and then you jump on top of the ceiling and then do, like, a literal pixel-perfect teleport that is so precise that it's, like, RNG. <laughs> and then that teleports you all the way, like, basically... <laughs> to the end of the first floor. The fuck? How, how have I not seen this? I don't click library elves, yeah. I'll be honest. I do not <laughs> like, click library elves. This is probably the hardest trick in in IL, I think. What? I, I don't know. It like It's one of the hardest, for sure. <laughs> Wood Carpet's the goat, man. But yeah. Get him, I, on, get him on the Hillerun's podcast <laughs> next week. We'll, we'll try, we'll try. I think him and Beardface are the only ones to do it in Urban. Maybe Camda did one. I don't know. Oh, I think Camda might have. Let me just double check. No, he doesn't. So it's only him and Bearface that do this teleport. So this was Bearface. No, they're top two for deserved, deserved top two. Yeah, this is top two. So Bearface does this. And you can see he reverts a couple times. Because it does save so much time if you get it. But it's so hard. And there, yeah, you got it. And Reverting in an IL. Yeah. You know the strat's hard and you're reverting a minute and 20 into an IL. Yeah. Rather than resetting. Yeah, and the thing is, it saves a lot of time and you have to hope for good RNG for the rest of the level. It's not like you land the trick <laughs> and you get the yeah. world record. You land the trick and then you have to hope that your 5% <laughs> chance of runs with, like, carrier bump and the last three doors of bumping get like the record so that's this why grinders, this, this, this run is like absolutely insane like this yeah, well, library's mad though look at that fifth six and seventh all from 2015 yeah it is absurd like how difficult it is to get these times yeah. like it's so rng and it's not a fun <laughs> grind <laughs> it really isn't that fun rng by the way cup <laughs> it's basically the na or New Alexandria yeah. for Reach, except a lot more random, and now you have a one of the most difficult skill-based things in the level too. So, yeah. Yeah, I I, I like Crazy. that comparison. I always used to think of Library and NA being one and the same. Yeah. <laughs> Very similar levels. Is Runner tier list going to be discussed? No, I I think that was something on the discuss topics list thing that I had up, but that was weird. I, I, I think I meant to put levels tier list there, and that was last week's list. So my brain was just... Yeah. Runner tier list gets toxic real fast. Yeah. And I, and I, I find it difficult. It's, e it's easy to do it by game. It's easy to do tier lists by game rather than by yeah. website, I guess, by all of Halo, because... Obviously, I have Halo Two biases. I'll admit that, yeah. and I'm sure you you have C biases somewhat. Yeah. I, like I would so. bias, for instance, for runners that, like I think, are more impressive to me based off of the games that I've played. And for instance, yeah. it's hard for me to say someone on Halo Five because I haven't played that game. Yeah. So, for instance, same. I wouldn't know how good David is in comparison to like other runners or something. Yeah. Same. Yes, the true runners tier list is here. The runners list. This is the runners from best to worst, obviously. So Swords <laughs> is the greatest of all time. Tom's a dog, honestly. Dog eats. <laughs> Chonos is retired. Yes. Nails is alright. Adds his top four respect. 
Hawks top five respect. Yev's Yev's bought me. Dude. I'm top ten. I'm a top ten runner of all time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I mean, to be fair, like, um, if we were to do a tier list over all of Halo, you just like right now it's, it's nails and zoo at the top, right? Yeah. At just least active. Playing, yeah. They're active they're three. dominating multiple games at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, th th I mean that, that 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 a lot of the names on the list that you're seeing right there are, are, are up there for sure. Yeah, I do want to get a filter for this. Where's Helix? Helix, can you filter runners to solo and co-op, please? I think we really need that back. <laughs> yeah, we need to be able to filter by. Can you not filter by game even? No, it it's no. literally just. This. Yeah. That, that, that's what the website needs. Just be yeah. able to like click on that C list and just yeah, yeah, like that would be would be nice. Yeah. There's so many runners here, dude. <laughs> I believe we've gone into like the thousands of runners in Halo runs, by the way, for just oh, yeah. this runners list. I don't know Dang if I can fog. just view it like this with clicking load more runners and going all the way down. So Garish is nearly out of the top 100 runners. Yeah, this is 2,000. We're at 2,000 runners, guys. At least 2,000 people that were on Halo runs. So if if you if you're on that list, guys, you you know you're better than like a few thousand people potentially. Yeah. <laughs> I'm better than 2,000 of you dogs. How many was zero points? Yeah, maybe a few, but... Uh, oh, it's not like, actually that many. Yeah. Oh, I got exactly 2,000 runners. exactly 2,000. <laughs> Let's go! 2,000 with at least one point in Halo runs, guys. Let's go. <laughs> There's a lot of people there, like, What's in the top... Cool to, like, link their <laughs> Twitch and stuff. Yeah. There's a lot. When all my co-op disappoints... It says you, yeah. You've probably got more co-op points than me, mate. <laughs> Fact. I'd, I'd, I'd be, I'd be doming you about co-op. Need to get that filter and improve it. I miss, I miss old Halo runs. I'm pretty sure, for instance, you can see solo and co-op for individual times, for instance. Like, can you? Yeah. Like in, in your own profile, you can see like I have 14k solo and 6k co-op, and then Adzi yeah, here got, has like 8k solo. Nine and a half. Okay. Yeah, I've only got well, six point five k co-op. Yeah. How many has Yev got? Here we go. Yev's about to make a fool of himself. Yep. Or oh, Yev's got yeah. three thousand more co-op <laughs> points than me. You're in the bin, dog. <laughs> Quit chatting, bro. Yeah. Literally Thumb got so three thousand <laughs> more co-op points than me. Yeah. I've done him in big time. <laughs> At the restriction, I, I don't know if we've added dog, the restrictions of, but oh, yeah, there, oh, there's right. a lot of things that we could do to improve. It's just like a lot of work sometimes, and people haven't put in the work to do the development and stuff. <laughs> Delete all my classic, yeah, true, actually. I mean, I, I think this is something that I do want to discuss, is why do Halo runners delete all their times all the time? I hate that. I really hate it. As someone yeah, that I... likes history and like stuff on the site being kept yeah, like, for like accuracy. research purposes, it's so stupid. Because I swear, Tell half of the it, runners, man. half of the runners don't have like times that are valid anymore because their video is deleted, their runs yeah. are removed from the site. Switch like vaults, why? By the way. Yeah, like please just keep your videos on the site, dude. <laughs> Dude, maybe we, maybe we should maybe we should just not let people delete their times once they're submitted. Remove the delete button. <laughs> Let's do that, dude. Fuck them. I I think the main issue is like for videos as well because people get so paranoid that on YouTube and they private their runs or they delete it from YouTube directly. And yeah. I don't know why Broke people do that. Way. It's so annoying. Yeah. Because I, I, yeah, it's a huge thing in Halo too. Obviously, we've gone through fucking like. <laughs> Like, out of like the top 10 Halo 2 runners of all time, like pretty much all of them have deleted runs at some point. Yeah. Like, obviously, Cryphon did it for a long time, and even now, I 
not I think he's got most of his stuff on Halo runs actually. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have all of his IL PBs. He only submits them if he's like really happy with them. So like there's a lot of ILs missing where he probably would be top three. Yeah. Which is obviously frustrating. Same with Rokats in a very similar situation. Rokats only really submits his recies, so yeah, a lot of times missing box. there. Uh, Mono obviously deleted all of his times recently, um, and yeah, it's just Jerv not submitting his insane times. It's just ugh. yeah. So, for instance, this is something that I was working on for the longest time, which was for the CE World Record Progression video. I I created this entire spreadsheet of stuff oh, with repos and everything Kronos um, must watch speedrun list for I, I, I don't really have too many but the, <sighs> these are solid like please watch these these were like the god tier times at the time <laughs> and but yeah you can see like especially in the early days like look at this for halo you have no runs from these runners like on the site so like when you're trying to make a video it's impossible <laughs> like how are you supposed to make a video where like a full year of times are just gone mm -hmm. and it's even more prevalent in some other games than ce like ce actually has a decent portion of like pretty solid amounts of times but i've looked into like other halo games like halo 2 is a nightmare like yeah. for the reasons you said and yeah. i think like yeah, and that's it's just really irritating when you have runs that you just don't exist anymore, and yeah, <laughs> it, it it's just a nightmare to handle when you're trying to make content or something, and like some runs just don't exist anymore. Yeah, it's a little, a little sad, to be honest. Yeah, um, like Nervy said, that's probably what's going to end up happening for whenever I would do not something. Not in the video. Like <laughs> I actually, I used to have a folder where I I downloaded um, videos when they got submitted. Yeah. Because so, people just kept deleting them, so yeah. I have a Halo runs folder somewhere. Yeah. Other runners runs. Yeah, what I, if I think... got a fucking coastal highway record in this. Yeah. I think something, for instance, that uh, is important is if you do have a run and you decide to not want people to like view it like on your public profile, just make it unlisted. Like, yeah, don't why? private it. Like, privating it just makes it so that no one can access it for any reason whatsoever. And deleting yeah, exactly. it just removes any like record or history, like period. So, yeah. Yeah, please, please, and <laughs> don't use Twitch VODs. Export them to YouTube, please. Yeah. I beg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty annoying. But like, for instance, for me, when I do speedrun.com submission stuff, uh, I believe for the uh, the Moist Critical Challenges, which I've helped handle, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of runners were submitting with literally just their stream. And for just the vod yeah not 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 highlighted it yeah so yeah. basically like those videos would just get deleted in a week so <laughs> if you had a top time we can't verify it for like a week later and that's terrible so that's why like whenever i'm doing video submissions or tell them all stuff i say no you can't submit this please highlight the run Good. And, like, yeah so it's pretty important, especially nowadays. It's like you have all the resources and tools. So you might as well just please have like, even if you don't want it on your main channel, just like have it on an, an alt that no one knows and no one can search for unlisted or something. And literally yeah. no one can find that video except like maybe the people that need it for like submission verification purposes. Like that's the entire point. So, yeah. Yeah, and like... I, I actually have um I even have a, a playlist with all my unlisted videos in, um just just titled speedruns. Every time I upload a speedrun to YouTube, I stick it in there, so I can uh, look for everything. Unfortunately, I'm not a record holder, so most of my shit is irrelevant. But yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty uh, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I do agree with Nervy here on Sleepless's statement on why you should be even allowed Twitch vids. I do 
think that Twitch highlights are fine. Like, they're completely fine, and I like them. It's just that... Uh, Even those just, time out, yeah. like, all the old... Like, when you're looking at, like, the... SC I, I don't stability. think those were highlights. Because yeah, the old not. highlights, like, for instance, the Garish run, that was a highlight. That was the SC Garish run. So that yeah. still exists from even 2017. But for things like just a streamed run, those don't exist anymore. But like exporting from Twitch to YouTube doesn't use any data, right? Because it's tw Twitch do it from their end. No? I, I think Twitch does it from their end as well, yeah. So it goes, it goes, off a, it goes from the Twitch server, I think. Mm -hmm. I thought so anyway. I didn't think it used any of your data. It's not downloading the Twitch highlight then re-uploading it yourself. There's literally an export button, but I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it is an export button, but I don't know. Like, for instance, for me, I do download and re-upload for some of my videos. Like, for instance, the podcast videos here. I like yeah. to download to make sure that everything's good, like, in that regard, like, perfect to my standards. And yeah, It's a lot that's... easier for me to do it that yeah. way. And yeah, it, it just depends, but even then, yeah. Yeah. Halo runs issues, I guess. People people deleting videos is the main thing. Call is always dog shit. Yeah, true. The quality's yeah. not great, but I mean it's, it exists, right? We can watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all I want. That's all I bloody want. Yeah, ideally, if if you're going for records, you should be locally recording and you should upload that video. But as long as we can see it and as long as it exists forever, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which isn't always the case. Yeah. So anything else we want to discuss, talk about, any questions from chat? I know and I saw one go by earlier, but I think it was just a meme one by Wacky, yeah. Asking about Spartan Ops. Is that serious? Are we actually going to add Spartan Ops? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't. I can't tell. I don't. I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> I'm, I'm. I think we're just sticking with mainline Halo games. All okay, the good. all the random other Halos are on speedrun.com anyways, and they do have their own moderation team there for those games, for instance. So it would but Spartan be kind Ops is of technically weird. in Halo Four, yeah. like it's it's a part of Halo Four. Oh, for Spartan like a... Ops. Yes, that's what I meant. Oh, okay. So not Spartan Assault or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Spartan Ops in Halo runs. It could I be a category that... extension, right? It gives Halo yeah. Four runners more stuff to play with. I don't see why not. Yeah, I think the main issue is people were discussing. Oh, there's 50 missions in there to add. Do you really want to add 50 missions or do you want is that to how many there are yeah oh, shit. okay they're like it's 50 missions and then there's like 10 chapters of five missions each yeah so yeah. what do you want to add it by chapter but then you have things like oh but what if i want to run just one particular mission or something and yeah it, it just adds a bunch of nuance and i, I, I don't think I, it's that I, popular yeah. of a category either no, uh, I really love the category extensions, but I do hate seeing them in the latest record runs. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, are you guys in chat the same? Like, I was looking through the recent records earlier today on stream, and there's very few records that I actually care to watch. Yeah, it's like it's skulls, just, <laughs> skulls, skulls run, lasso, so. freaking yeah. uh, acrophobia, like co op. Mm -hmm. Co-op doesn't quite fall into that, but almost. Mm -hmm. I don't really care too much about watching Co-op. Yeah. And that that is what 90% of the records are nowadays, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be cool to just have, like, maybe two world record runs. One for just solo runs, for instance, or the main categories. And then one for just all. But, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just more nuance, more things to add to the bot. Maybe yeah. you want to get notified of one thing or the other. Maybe mm -hmm. you're you want to just know CE because like you're just playing CE. Yeah, yeah. I mean that so, is a thing. There are people that just play and watch one game, right? Yeah. It's fair. But yeah, making it a separate Discord. There's a lot of shenanigans for things <laughs> that you could do, but is it that useful to add? Is it that important? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, it's not really. 
yeah. It's just just a slight a slight annoyance, I guess, right? When will thy nails be finally outed as Dubzo's alt? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We're not leaking, we're not leaking here, not today. Okay. Exposed. Yeah, there was one on relay teams. It would be cool for like a mini event. I don't want it for an actual relay race because there's going to be so much bias and yeah. stuff. But like and, drafts with yeah. captains. That'd be good. Yeah. I had a, I had a nightmare the other night that I was doing the relay. I was doing Halo 2 ledge relay and I like woke up and I was like, oh shit, I'm I'm late for the relay and I like hopped on. I was there just in time. <laughs> but I hadn't de at all and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna be so bad. Yeah. It was a horrible dream. I don't know mm -hmm. why I was dreaming about that shit. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Speaking of which, I should probably start setting up relay stuff like at the end of the month since summer coming soon. Yeah. So is it is it is it ledge this time? Uh, it should be easy. That's easy. Okay. Yeah. Got behind and stuff. Yeah, it'll be easy pretty late. Hype. <laughs> Four teams, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's gonna get harder and harder every year. I feel like Halo runs is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't want to say it's dying, but it's getting quieter. And the games are already quiet. Essentially, getting even quieter, but. Yeah, I think it depends on which games you're looking at, for instance. And oh, yeah, I mean, Halo 4 else? and ODST have become more popular, I guess, mm -hmm. than they have been. So, Like, I know some games like CE, for instance, has been popping off still, because, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking Halo 5, to be honest. Yeah, Halo 5 <laughs> is Infinite, rough. Halo Infinite is going to be weird, because, like, Halo Infinite has been really weird for Relay. Yeah, we don't want to, like, exclude it, but is... Is there enough active runners and are they close enough in times for balancing sakes? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. and that along with like what category do you want to run? Easy any percent or easy all missions or something? Yeah. It's like things like that. What patches and stuff. Halo Infinite's a nightmare for that sort of thing. And even then there's not a lot of runners for Halo Infinite. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, yeah. Like for the mainline games, I can see like Pretty much all the games have easy runners, pretty solidly. And for Halo Five, you always have the bat chat, David. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's a good upside at least. Bat chat, David, phobic. Yeah, phobic who else? Ecliptic. 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 That's the usually the fall, right? But I don't know yeah. if Ecliptic's been playing much. I haven't seen him too much around. Yeah. Sure could get be... Sorex on for Halo Five. Yeah, for a guy. I mean, Renegade it could maybe do it. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of it things, a lot of people. How about Halo yeah. 2 in like H2A? Which act? Yeah. People? Because like the thing is as well, like Zoo is like runs multiple games. Which game would he run? It... So yeah, I know, right? I mean, Halo 2 is always gonna be fine. There'll be people that come out uh, come out of the the wood. You got you got like your semi-retired people like me mm -hmm. that can can step up like. Yeah. Big and I'm always there to just fill in, like, whatever. Yeah, Rat, Temp's still about, he, he could yeah. probably show up. Sleek's yeah. still about. I don't think there's anyone that's mega active right now. I mean, Sinister, mm -hmm. I guess, but yeah. he doesn't really play easy. I think but it's you, just, you like, show up. the lull period is where we're at right now. There's no, like, big activities or anything going no. on. I do think this summer will be really cool, like, once the relay happens and once more things come out. I think summer will be Halo Run's times to shine. <laughs> <laughs> You're optimistic, Jonas. Yes, I, like I am it. very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> For reasons why I can't say. <laughs> Papega, really? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Leak it, dude? Leak no, it? no leaking. Leak it? Uh, let's see. So... Oh, something that we could do as well is co-op. Yeah, co-op relay of sorts. That would be interesting. Co-op relay. <laughs> or at least people? like a co-op trilogy run would be really interesting where people compete. Like Yeah, I guess that could potentially yeah. do something. Like two player co-op relay. Shorter, that'd be good. Like bungee percent or something would be half all their runners. Yeah. Because I don't think you can get that many co-op runners for some of the other games, for instance. So, like, for instance, Halo 4, Halo 5. I'm not sure how many people would do 
those co-op runs. I'm pretty sure you could have some, but yeah, yeah, a co-op relay of sorts would be pretty cool. Kronos, head of Halo Runs Esports Division. Stop <laughs> leaking it. <laughs> get the league. Get the league up. Halo Runs Esports GG. New <laughs> website. Yes. Oh, uh, I do want to speak to Too Easy. Maybe instead of Halo Runs podcast next week, we could have a Halo Runs uh, break the record event. I believe people want to grind something in Reach. Yeah. I believe that was something that was brought up. So maybe not oh this weekend, maybe next weekend or something. Maybe the weekend where I'm not available, we could have a Halo Runs uh, event like that. We we do yeah, want more easy. Halo Runs events. Because like I, I do think there's a lot of room for things like that. Like, for instance, game shows. I do want to have game shows for the Halo Runs podcast. So that's something to look forward to. Stuff in general, like break the record events, would be really cool. That or like similar things to the off topic relay, which I think was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> things like that are pretty cool to have. Yeah, the off topic relay was cool. Um, I have a DM from Zephyrik suggesting to do a draft based relay. You have four captains, obviously, you take turns to pick players for each game. Out of I don't know who the candidates would be. I guess people would have to volunteer themselves. It might, yeah, <laughs> might be a struggle, but it, it, it could be fun. And then he suggested making it a bit more fun, like having captains can have sort of um, they can apply difficulty adaptations to certain people. So you can yeah. either add like difficulties, so this makes one of the difficulties normal for one of the games, or yeah. make someone play with blind skull on, or make someone play <laughs> on minimum brightness. Yeah, I was thinking about something uh, else, I believe, for a time, on, like, an actual tournament setting thing. So, <laughs> like, for esports-wise things, you could say, like, a pick-and-ban drafting of levels for a game, and basically you're competing on, like, All the a best-of-five or something of just those levels. That would be pretty that'd, interesting. That'd be pretty pog, actually. That'd be pretty pog. <laughs> yeah. It's just that you would have to get people that, like, for instance, multiple games. If you want to do cross-game, you could, like, pick ban games and then pick ban levels within a game or something. Things like that would be pretty cool. It's just that you need the people for it, <laughs> and it's weird. Yeah, it's like the Titanfall 2 tourney that's going on right now that Brian Otto is running, which is the Mach 3 thing. So basically the runners pick and ban levels and they just choose to run like one specific level. And they, like whoever wins that moves on basically until the end. It makes a lot more cool. sense for Titanfall because there's a lot of levels and it's basically all just within one game. So that's why Halo Runs is a bit weirder, because there's not as many levels, but the game disciplines with runners are very different. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so say, right, let me let me free you, Craft. So uh, there's a Halo 2 tournament, right? I'm playing, I get matched against someone. Say I get matched against, I don't know, Nails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm in the bin, dude. I'm, I'm fucking retiring on the spot, but... <laughs> So we, we we both get to like pick and we both get to ban three levels each and then whatever levels are remaining we play them three times each and it's have it's the faster times or how does it work? Like it's literally whoever so I, I was thinking about it as you play one level, like each person picks one level at a time. And yeah. then you race each other on that one level one time. And whoever yeah. wins that one time wins that level. And then whoever okay. wins the most, like, you know, best of five or something, Levels. like three, would go in advance or something. Could do a team-based? Yeah, team a team-based really one good. would be probably a good idea for that sort of thing. Be really good. Because then you have, like, strategies, right? Like, you're, like, you say you're against, I don't know, who's a... Say you're against Cambid and the enemy team picks TB. Mm -hmm. Maybe you like sacrifice me to Cambid because you know he's gonna beat anyone anyway. Yeah, so you, you can be like tactical of your team. 
Yeah. I think that's something that, uh, like, Smash tournaments, for instance, where you have uh, players, you pick and ban stages, for instance, and choose characters based off of your, like, whatever you like. I mean, it's kind of weird for me to bring it up that way, since people don't really counterpick characters too much, but no. you could do something similar. There, There's, like, a lot of mini tournaments that have those kinds of oh you have a team with some skill sets and you're yeah. you pick and choose your teammates for those skill sets sort of things exactly that could, that could be really interesting to be fair if you had like four teams of three maybe yeah it could be small mm. and pretty competitive that way too so yeah it yeah. just needs the runners to put in the time they definitely need to have band dials as well like if... yeah if I was against Cambit or whatever, like I'd I'd want to ban like TB or whatever. So yeah, it like for, be for a... like I would ban for instance levels that are very like non-existent in terms of like uh armory or yeah exactly yeah no, I'd, super I'd short keep armory, ones mate. like high high charity or something I yeah. don't know like you could probably make it fair even without banning those kinds of levels but you just have to basically choose because you could probably ban like more and more levels if things get out of hand or something blind bans that would be interesting too <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of lots of potential ideas about this. potential it'd be pretty yeah. it'd be pretty fun <laughs> Stick it, stick an actual multiplayer one v one in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me smack some freaking campaign kids about. Yeah, maybe <sighs> also brought up an idea of just having it so that runners have to get the fastest time within an hour to win that level or something. Yeah, that I think both ideas are good. Too. I think of one, like just literally one IL each would make for more. Yeah. Randomness, yeah. more. Yeah. Excitement, because yeah, I think that sort of thing is more fun. <laughs> yeah. If you reset infinitely for an hour, then the better player will almost always win, which yeah. is good for competition, but mm -hmm. worse for entertainment. So yeah. I think I, I think good. just I think one level makes it more hype because you could have the pro just fail something like yeah, absurd, exactly. and then the person that just barely it's knows how to play. play you get the underdog <laughs> victories, right? Yeah, and those are the hype moments. Those are the yeah. moments people live for are the underdog stories, honestly. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think the the nervy idea is way more comp better for competition competitiveness. Yeah. It, but... It's better for uh if you want to keep things fair and stuff, but things yeah. that are unfair are also also good. good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> more exciting, right? Yeah. So things like that are definitely up there. Yeah, fastest IL in a certain amount of time or tries sounds fun. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of for Break the Record, yeah. Or the Break the Record for Halo events sort of things where people are just doing a grind session and that's basically how it is for it. You just pick a level and literally 10, 15 people, I don't know, can just start grinding the level to try to get world record. Yeah. Even like, you could do something in between where you do like a best of three. Like mm -hmm. you just do the IL three times each, and like say I'm faster than the other person on, on attempt one, and I'm up one nil, and then it goes to like yeah. one all, and then it's like ooh. You could do that, but I think that would still be kind of very consistent for the better player to win. Like, yeah, but it's yeah, consistent. somewhere in between a bit, somewhere but, in between. Yeah, it's. I could, <laughs> I could maybe get Brad on H two, and me and him could trial some of these ideas because I think we're pretty similar right yeah. now in terms of times so yeah halo runs bingo that's all that's, I, I, that's I was talking to uh i forgot who it was one of the people that ran bingo thon for uh like an event which is a marathon yeah. for just bingo so they pitched an idea of having a halo runs bingo be showcased there i don't think anyone submitted for it but really yeah it would be really cool to have a bingo just run of sorts and people just yeah. compete in that sort of thing. It would be fun to have. I don't know if anyone has made a 
good bingo card though of sorts but no, it's yeah. definitely been done i remember them people doing them in the past mm -hmm. but I, I remember like sparkly doing something like that or something i think it'd be really good with teams again as well like so yeah. you get a bingo card and like one of your your things is to like yeah, be, be X level in under two minutes or whatever. Yeah, and you get to like assign your team mates to do different stuff. Yeah, you could have like two or three teammates, and then you're trying to complete like a bingo card. Yeah, and yeah. have some really easy ones and some like quite hard ones that might require more time, and you have to sort of yeah assign your yeah. players. <laughs> a team bingo would be pretty cool. Yeah, make them all like accessible. Yeah, maybe not nightfall in under two minutes, like mm -hmm. but. Nightfall and under three thirty, then like, anyone could do it. But you might want to assign your reach runner to do that to get mm -hmm. it done guaranteed. Or yeah, I was yeah, thinking kind of more fun things. things like uh, kill ten hunters or something, or like yeah. uh, collect skulls or terminals, things like that. You could have some fun things as well. Yeah, I think that's not... probably better. To yeah, be I was just thinking <laughs> of purely speed run. Yeah, because I I do like the idea of just having things that people don't see in runs and you have the opportunity to showcase things that aren't used for instance yeah so for like stuff like maybe even multiplayer maps you could have something with those kind of bingo card ideas <laughs> <laughs> so yeah lots of extra game knowledge would be required and would be very cool to see i hope someone in chat is noting all these ideas down man for the <laughs> Halo Halo Runs MLG 2023 circuit. Yes, we coming, will have coming soon. the Halo Runs Olympics where we have teams based <laughs> off of your country. So obviously the US will be super strong with me, Hark, Crayfin. <laughs> Yikes, that's a good team. <laughs> team Freehead all the way, mate. Yeah. We'll do you but then in. you have Team Australia with Candid and Burnt and Seclusive. <laughs> Yeah, like you, you could have stuff like that for Olympic like ideas of teams. Those could be Wingman pretty as fun. Well. Yeah, you have like just goaded countries and stuff, and you have runners <laughs> from each country participating. You don't even have to be like super specific. Like you could have it be like uh, Australia plus New Zealand plus like whatever other countries in Oceania area yeah. you could have it like for europe there's like the, the uh, nordic countries even, is all that's been yeah, discussed filter as far it as more it. yeah and for us there's like a lot of people in the us or something you could split it like east west probably things like yeah, that if you if things are like unfair yeah past. you could probably do stuff like that but, yeah yeah i believe we this like i've talked about this sort of thing in the past let's make but, it happen man yeah, we, we should happen. try to make more of these things happen it's just that we one need people to want it and two we need people to put in the work <laughs> we need to put in the work for it it's, it's a bit of a meme right it doesn't need to be competitive maybe it's something we could do yeah it's like a pre-relay relay yeah. but like i don't know probably like a seasonal thing or something probably maybe maybe in like september or october we do a we do a country relay or whatever like yeah nation nation and it doesn't even have to be like a full Com relay you could have it like only the bungee games or something or like maybe you yeah. just want the mainline trilogy or yes yeah, events yeah, like bungee, this would bungee be really games cool would be good yeah not not to not to not to <laughs> discriminate into the games just the lack of players again obviously yeah. but yeah i'll probably hit up too easy then to talk about break the record for reach we could probably schedule that like the weekend yeah, before GDQ because I believe I won't be here during that time. Sounds and, good. Yeah. I also have to go to <laughs> I might not be available for another weekend as well next month. All right, the deal. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I'm pretty busy next month with a lot of stuff. Good. Good man. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, if there's any other things people want to say in chat or anything, we think we reached close to the end here. So, any last words or comments or anything? <laughs> anything from the chat? I mean, I, 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 
uh, it's been it's been nice to be, to be on here yeah. and uh have, have a good chat about stuff yeah <laughs> still love my old halo runs buddy yeah, yeah he's my bedtime <laughs> fucking hell getting sleepy <sighs> yeah no, I, I do it's... wonder what i should do for next week if anyone has any ideas I believe I wanted to do a quiz show, but I don't know if I'll have the time to put in to, like, get all the questions and stuff and things sorted out. Speaking of which, Dubso, you should send me the folder for the pictures of stuff. I, I Sorix yeah. has the most of them. Or, I, I helped yeah, him with Sorex a couple of the levels. Yeah. But I, I spoke to Sorix quickly about it in DMs, and he was like, good idea, but obviously because it's a podcast, it should be audio-friendly, which obviously that isn't the best for, but yeah yeah we'll, we'll chat about that anyway yeah maybe 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 some quizzes maybe some more interactivity next week boys yes yeah. um but no promises <laughs> <laughs> we'll try this some busy man. Uh, i don't my... know as well for who's going to be hosting next week as well so yeah I I'm, I'm not available next saturday unfortunately but yeah. i'll, I'll be i'll be the <laughs> i'm happy to come on whenever you need me apart from when i'm busy <laughs> yeah Basically, I do want to have like people that come in occasionally, like Sorix and you, for instance. Or yeah, we'll be like rotational, rotational hosts. We could have some guest hosts and guest members and stuff. Yeah, definitely. I don't know what your first question on stream was, Zephyrik. And in terms of you hosting, I guess we could talk about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. It would be pretty interesting. <laughs> but, I yeah, I, I mean, sure. in general, I just want ideas and stuff to keep this series going. It is a lot of fun to do. Like, I really enjoy stuff like this. Uh, does Nightbot not have a thing with all the questions? Yes, it does. And I have it. Uh... I don't think we, I don't think we, oh, can we get, was this about Hilarus is getting permanently added to the stream list? Is it not already? It, it's it's yeah. showing on there right now. I don't know whether that was I, I manually added. It's though. On it. Let me go to. Halo. Yeah, it's on, it has to on be there right now. Halo games. What do you mean? Wait, what? What kind of? Oh, are we during streaming? off topic. Okay, during off topic marathon. Yeah, I could fix that. That that's a thing that I didn't realize. Yeah, it was a bit of a shame. Stream at new. Oh, it already is there. I don't know. Wait. Non user streams, Halo races. Like, it should be. Maybe I need to edit something? I don't know. That's weird. I, I think it would have to be something that whoever's managing the Discord bot has to do then. Because I can't do it from like Halo runs Wacky. to the website. <laughs> Free. All right. It's time to wrap it up, Chonos. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to episode five of the Halo Runs podcast. We went through GDQ for Gelk, a few IL history stuff, a bit of discussion on PGCR, and some other things like feature ideas for things we could do for the halo races channel and stuff and just future halo runs events and yeah hope you all enjoyed and hopefully next week we'll have some more fun things planned so yeah thanks for tuning thanks. in thanks for having me and yeah. uh yeah have, have a good uh, have a good weekend boys yeah 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 is there anyone we would like to host there's a few people live, Vault's live, Sloth's live, Gelk's live. Everybody host Gelk when yeah. we spoke about him earlier on. Yep, let's host Gelk because uh, he is the one that we talked about getting into GDQ. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. And see ya. Once I click this right now button, which is in five <laughs> seconds. Okay. <laughs> see you guys.